Welcome to Missing the Mark, where we look for meaning in strange places. I'm Christopher. A few weeks ago, I watched a video from Noel Plum, who's a YouTube atheist. Um, I don't have a good sense of the, the hierarchy of YouTube atheists. I don't spend much time watching. Um, on Twitter, he describes himself as a pseudo-intellectual moron. And I've had a few interactions with him, and that seems a, a little harsh. But um, in any event, I, I saw a video of his which um, w was better than I expected. And uh, so first, uh, sort of, it was clever. I, I wouldn't go so far as saying it was good, but it was clever. It was a response to Deconverted Man. Uh, Deconverted Man had a video which, um, well, at least uh, Mr. Plum characterized uh, this sort of video as a popular one around uh, the, the YouTube atheist community, wherein the atheist makes a video saying, if I believed in God, would I worship him? No, because God is too evil, and I am too principled, and I would never bow down and worship someone that awful, etc. And he said he really thinks of this as basically just virtue signaling, which perhaps it is, at least in some cases. Um, in Deacon Man's case, I do suspect he believes it. Um, he's, in general, I think, reasonably sincere. But anyway, um, the... Uh, the thing that uh, Mr. Plum was saying was he, he made the very clever case that, um, in this case, look at earthly regimes um, you know, that we have now, like North Korea, places like that. And they can only visit on you finitely much suffering. I mean, they, their ability to control human nerve endings is limited, and at some point you're going to die of old age, if not from the torture. So, though great, the amount of suffering they can inflict is finite, whereas the amount of suffering the hypothetical god in this, um, you know, in these sort of videos, uh, can inflict is infinite, and therefore infinitely more. And if you look at these regimes, you tend to see smiling faces loving in public their beloved dictator and uh, mouthing all the right things and going along with it because even the finite amount of suffering that can be visited upon them is enough to intimidate almost everybody into going along with it. And he said for that reason, he suspects that people, if they were faced with infinitely much suffering uh, as a possibility, would almost all of them definitely kowtow and, you know, just, you know, do what they're supposed to in order to avoid the infinitely much suffering. And uh, I, I thought it was a clever case, um, basically. I mean, obviously, I, I don't think, I didn't see the reaction totally. I saw some comments. It didn't apparently sit perfectly well. Uh, with some of his fellow atheists, but I, I think they're not giving him enough credit that it really was actually fairly clever and insightful. Um, for the sort of limited thing, because here's the problem, and to some degree I'm making this video for, you know, atheists who like watching YouTube videos, to just sort of mention, like, what would actually happen, uh, especially if you hadn't publicly gone on to proclaim how principled you would be. Um, because while it was clever, it's, its cleverness is very limited and very narrow. Because it's forgetting that what would happen if you just found out that something that you had thought was false is true, and something with incredibly far-reaching implications, you would not keep everything you had believed up to this point and flip this one thing and do no additional thinking on the subject. What you would do is reevaluate. Now, you can see this. Uh, you know, look at fiction. There's a reveal that, that somebody, there was a relationship there, or somebody was lying that you thought was telling the truth, or somebody's actually a traitor. And so, you know, it turns out that somebody's a traitor, and so you reevaluate their actions in the past on the basis of this new information of them being a traitor. You don't just leave everything exactly the same and just think, oh, well, I guess they're a traitor, uh, and move on. Now, all the more when you have, well, it turns out that the world is actually being run by an intelligence, do you reevaluate everything in light of this? If it turns out that human beings don't simply disappear when they die, but have immortal souls, you reevaluate everything in terms of that. See, because this is the thing, like, so much of this whole, like, God is so evil, is all predicated on treating God, uh, in talking about the Bible in particular, in treating God especially as it's found in the Old Testament, as if atheism is true. That, and even more so, treating God as if atheism is true, and that the God depicted here is an entirely human character. Kind of, you know, 
barely even god of Olympus, like, like almost more like the Norse gods, but, um, you know, kind of like a Star Trek character, you know, with, with just sufficiently advanced technology. That is to say that it's all done on the assumption that from God's perspective, death is completely final too. Now, if you come to... I, I understand why there's a mental block here, by the way. Um, it, it's natural enough. It's not easy to reason on premises that you hold to be false. Some people can do it. An awful lot of them have degrees in math or in philosophy, especially in math. Um, math is all about reason. Ma math is all hypothetical. It's all, suppose that the following were true. You never, ever ask the question when you're getting a math degree, well, is it true? No, you, it's irrelevant. You take it as a hypothetical. Anyway, that's hard. Look at how many people get math degrees. It's not many. Look at how many people get philosophy degrees. I think it's even fewer. Most people don't do this. Most people have trouble with this. And, and I get it. I understand it. Not one of those people, but, you know, I've got a degree in math. Um, and, and I worked in a minor in philosophy. It stopped when it turned out the department I was in didn't believe that truth was accessible. At which point, what's the point? Anyway. But nonetheless, I get it. It's hard. Reasoning on premises that you think are false is just hard. Why bother? For most people, it just, it's pointless. And I understand. And this, by the way, limits most, most atheists to not being able to understand religion because they can't reason based upon the religious premises. They reason based upon their own premises, which simply are completely inapplicable. So it doesn't work in any way, shape, or form to reason about God as if God was finite and death was the end. That, that, it, it has no applicability whatsoever. What would happen if you came to believe in God is now, believing this, these premises to actually be true, that the soul is immortal, that God is infinite, and so on, you would consider things like what happens in the Old Testament under rubrics of things like God is simultaneously considering every human being's good from the first human being all the way through the last. And you would also consider that when somebody dies in any way whatsoever, including, you know, say being um, drowned in the Red Sea when the sea comes crashing back, that from God's perspective, this person does not wink out of existence. From God's perspective, this person simply changes state from being on earth to being whatever it is that that person is after being on earth. This is a little bit closer, you know, actually, um, good analogy for the difference in perspective is consider when somebody goes off to college, consider their parents perspective and consider their dog's perspective from their dog's perspective, going off to college is, well, that's it. They're gone. They're not around anymore. They've died. That's the end. This is the worst thing that's ever happened because their favorite person on earth, assuming the dog liked you, is now dead, as far as they can tell. From the parent's perspective, well, you know, they're still texting you and, and so on. You're perfectly alive. In fact, they're happy for you because all sorts of good things are happening. From their perspective, you're still quite alive. Now, the dog's perspective is essentially that atheistic perspective of, well, death is it. That's it. Nothing else. Worst thing that could possibly happen all over now. That parent's perspective is closer, though it's not still not a great analogy for gods, because the parent knows that that's not the end and things still go on. So from the dog's perspective, something like where the parent encouraged the child to go off to college, that's the worst thing possible. That parent is evil, if the dog could figure out the parent had something to do with this. From the parent's perspective, actually, they're being quite helpful because college is good for the, the person. Uh, let's assume the dog's going to, you know, die before the kid gets back or something. Uh, dogs can't see that far into the future anyway. Not, not a perfect analogy, but this somewhat describes a radical different, radically different perspectives. And how if the dog suddenly came to um, understand that the... the child was alive in college, they wouldn't say like, well, I'm still not going to do, you know, I'm still going to keep biting those evil parents who sent the kid off to college because the dog would know it wasn't actually evil to send the kid off to college. The same thing applies to God. When you take as premises that God actually does know everything, that God is all powerful and that the human souls are immortal, suddenly the entirety of the New Testament looks very, 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 very different to you. And so... I'm not saying what an atheist would do, specifically, what they would think of it, because you know, different believers think different things. Um, but if the atheist became a believer, I can tell you what they wouldn't do, and that is continue for the rest of their days to 
think of everything in their purely atheistic terms without ever reevaluating anything. What they would actually do is realize there's a lot they're missing out on, stop, and start learning. That's what would actually happen. Um, so I, I do want to give credit to Mr. Plum for, for his, you know, fairly narrow cleverness, but um, just, just to sort of you know, give spoilers um, uh, for those of you who, you know, uh, haven't publicly gone on record as saying for certain what you would do and therefore having a, a deeply social reason you need to stick to what you said in public. Um, you, you don't need to be afraid of it, because what would happen is you'd actually you know, think things through. Until next time, may you hit everything you aim at.